Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host for the show, David Blaine. We thank you for joining us today, either on 94.1 FM WNBU or Cable TV 10 in New Bern. We welcome you to the show. Got a good show lined up. There's been a lot in the news. Of course, the debt ceiling, we're going to touch on that. Uh, by the time you hear this or uh, watch it on TV, hopefully that will be all resolved, but we're still going to touch on a, a few points with that. Before we get started, though, as always, the show is about you and your money, and so we like to hear what you want to hear on the show. So let us know your ideas, uh, your comments, your questions are Phone number is 252-633-0107. Our email is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And, of course, you can visit us on the web and get the email or the phone number. Uh, The website is www.dlblaine.com. And you'll also find uh, archived copies of the show if you happen to want to go back and listen to some previous shows. So we're going to start off a little bit uh, with the debt ceiling debate. As you probably know by now, on Sunday the House passed the uh, debt limit increase. And and sometime uh, we're recording the show, I believe the Senate will be voting possibly during the show or a little bit after the recording. And it's probably going to pass. So that part of uh, the crisis is sort of resolved. But... If we go back to last week, I'm going to cover a few things. We sent out this uh, letter to clients, and I think you viewers and listeners might benefit from it. So there are three major issues. One was not raising the debt ceiling. Number two was the default on the securities. And three, the downgrade of Treasury securities by the rating agencies. So all these issues were related, but they're not the same. Uh, The the most dangerous of the three, as I've said on the show and to clients, the defaulting on the debt is just not, you know, a reality that the government has money coming in and and they would not default on the debt. So that scenario, and if you look at the markets, you know, there's been no panic selling. There's been, you know, certainly decline in the stock markets, but that this decline has been no more unusual than the 10 or 12 other ones that have happened since the beginning of this bull market in March of 2009. It's just been a normal sell-off. And, of course, the debt ceiling is in race. So, really, out of the three issues remaining, we have the uh, downgrade of the U.S. credit rating from AAA to something else. And so that's what I'm going to focus on. The default on the debt is, you know, basically a non-event, and the debt ceiling being raised is, um, is, is going to happen. So we want to focus on the downgrade. Um, one thing that this would certainly not be a desirable outcome to have the debt downgraded, although I don't think it would be catastrophic. If you look at the long-term implications uh, in, say, Japan, which at the time was the world's second largest economy, their debt was downgraded to AA in 2002, and yet again in January of 2011 to AA-. And, of course, the Japanese economy has been anemic, um, but you know their borrowing costs are still very low, their interest rates are still very low, and, of course, the economy has not collapsed. People there are still eating. Uh, it's still a developed society. And the yen... Uh, the Japanese currency is still uh, a currency of choice around the world, that people still use it, people still, uh, other countries still use it as somewhat of a reserve currency. And so a U.S. downgrade from AAA to AA, you know, that's a long way to get to, a, say, a triple C like Greece is. And so we think a lot of that risk is probably already priced into the market. Now, there are some unusual circumstances. A lot of things depend on the interest rate of treasuries and assuming that it's AAA. And so there are a lot of unknown factors, um, you know, financial institution models and pension funds that require the investment of AAA. However, there's about $14 trillion worth of domestically held uh, treasuries and, and the majority of those investors are unlikely to s- sell it off. Um, you have treasuries in 
everything from money market funds to bond funds to individual investors' portfolios to pension funds. Uh, certainly the foreign bond holders, you know, China and Russia and Japan and the uh, Bank of England, these entities are not going to go out and just start a mass selling of U.S. Treasuries. Number one, they would destroy the price, and, and they know that. Uh, and number two, what is the alternative? There is no other uh, security that offers the liquidity and sheer volume that the U.S. Treasuries do. And so if, if they were to move from Treasuries to, say, German bonds or Japanese bonds or something like that, you, you would drive the price of those up so much that it wouldn't be worth moving. You might as well stay in the uh, U.S. Treasury. So we think that that is an unlikely scenario. Once again, there are some a lot of unknowns. Um, the U.S. Treasury has been the gold standard, AAA, and so there's there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding it, but there's just not a lot of other options. The same thing with the dollar. The dollar is the reserve currency. Uh, we don't think there's going to be a lot of panic selling. In fact, as we look at the data, the dollar has actually been appreciating has been holding its value very well throughout this crisis, and Treasury bonds have been going up in value. The, I just looked before I came into the show, the past four weeks, the long-term Treasury bond has gone up almost 5%, and since February, it's gone up almost 12%. And so you certainly don't see panic selling would be driving those prices down. You actually see the, the, the value of Treasuries going up. People are... are paradoxically buying them. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking about, this is not a client of mine, they were talking about shorting the treasuries. And, and of all the things that I definitely would not recommend would be to short treasuries. I'm sure, you know, some people get nervous. Maybe you want to ease up on the risk of the portfolio a little bit. We happen to think it's a, there's going to be a good buying opportunity, but you certainly don't want to be out there uh, shorting the uh, treasuries. There's some positive things going on in the global economy. Corporations, you know, you joke, you probably saw the articles, you know, Apple uh, last week had more cash in the bank than the U.S. government. Uh, they could probably single-handedly solve the debt, uh, the Greek debt crisis themselves. And so you have a lot of uh, corporations that have a lot of cash and are very financially solid. And so we remain vigilant at these times. We just don't feel like absent new financial information that uh, investors certainly should not panic. Um, for more aggressive people, it actually could be a good buying opportunity. But this is why we construct globally diversified portfolios with uh, investments in all asset classes, commodities, gold, stocks, bonds, and, and so forth. Um, and these portfolios have held up very well. Well, we've reached our first break, so when we come back, we'll continue this discussion. So for all things money, I'm your host, David Blaine.